Hey guys, this is Cornelis with Plug Together Computer Repair, Networking, Advanced Routing Implementations, and everything else you can imagine I haven't mentioned. If that isn't a good commercial, I don't know anymore. Ha! Um, <laughs> anyway, uh, today we're going to talk about Layer 3 switching. <clears throat> Most people don't even know what I'm talking about, but I bet that some companies know what I'm talking about. Therefore, I made this video. Why layer 3 switching while your router and a stick works fine. First let me tell you, um, when I studied for a CCNA um, I had to learn about the router and a stick and uh, trunking protocols like dot one q and ISL and um, it's probably one of the more difficult parts on the exam because I was uh, they were questioning me in exam uh, a, quest, um, a question with multiple items and you had to really configure the stuff and find the root switches for the different uh, VLANs in the spanning tree um, if you're on a clock sometimes it can be kind of hectic and stressful and easy to make mistakes however I passed CCNA and then I moved on to CCMP and they start introducing and had to study about layer 3 switches and I was like uh, layer 3 I mean I had troubles enough to work with the layer 2 and spanning tree and to grasp it all uh, why layer 3 but now um, I work with it and implement it in companies that I have to say it makes so much more sense because let me tell you what the problem is with uh, with this configuration and of course it works, it works and people do it for ages and there's no uh, problem if you have it configured this way but um, let's picture the following scenario this fellow here she would give him some hair okay he's going to transfer two gigabytes of data over the wire to the other host goes to the link, goes to the switch, goes to the router, comes back to the router, goes back to the trunk, goes to the switch, to the other host. Okay, that's a large sum of data. Now this host likewise uh, needs to browse the web. Goes here and it download, downloads a bunch of stuff like Casa or whatever. Um, for two hosts maybe that's manageable, but imagine you have like 10 or 20 or 30 hosts. That will give a lot of problems because this trunk, this trunk will soon be congested and network slowdowns are to be expected um, therefore we have layer 3 switches okay therefore we're using one device <coughs> that does everything and the beauty of this is it works on wire speed it uses the ASEC technology application specific integrated circuit technology to make all that stuff happen so instead of going to a router this host can simply go to the switch directly to the switch, the switch routes the traffic to the other network and the traffic arrives at the other host. How beautiful is that? The other reason for having layer 3 switch is you only have one device and remember the, less, the least amount of devices in the network the better because every device is also on point of failure. If you want if you're not trusting one device or one switch you can of course set up like another switch and have it filled over. But that's another topic, another story. Uh, we don't have to cover this. So, um, layer 3 switching. We have VLAN 1, VLAN 2. I have a few IP addresses here. Uh, very simple, a 2 network, 24 bit, and a 3 network, 24 bit. I don't have an IP phone, neither this host. For the more, I want to emphasize that I replace these hosts with routers so I can explain you and show you the cool features of a layer 3 switch. Um, this radio service is sitting there. It could be anything, really. It does, it's kind of irrelevant uh, for the purpose of this video. This could have been as well, like a link to the web. Wow. Yeah. Let's say this is the web. Beautiful. Now, um, so let's hop over to the switch. I'm gonna do show run. Yep. Show run. So I'm at the catalyst 50. Fifth, uh, sorry, 3560 is what I have here. Um, the fast Ethernet is on VLAN 1, the fast 2 is on VLAN 2. 
and notice that you don't see uh, VLAN 1 listed here at uh, Ethernet 1 because by default they're all part of 1. Now, um, another thing I want to show you, you can transform a layer 3 switch in, an, in a router. Um, in Fast Ethernet 0, 3, I configured IP address. And with IP address, you can actually use it as a complete router. There's no difference. The same applies to virtual interfaces, VLAN interfaces, which I have configured here. Okay, so we have the, the virtual LANs here. Um, the all you need to do is you configure a virtual, actually a VLAN interface, uh, matching the VLANs, and the router takes care of the rest. The router routes the traffic beautiful from point, from point A to B. Now, I'm going to show you something cool, because look at this. We have even a routing protocol configured, ERGRP, on the switch, taking care of all the routing. Now, isn't that cool or what? So let me show you. Let's go to the the host. Remember, the host is a router, and do show up your route. You see all these networks coming in beautifully. Uh, the main one is a tree network here on the bottom, and that's uh, routed by ERGP on the switch. Um, of course, we've connected. I think this is a loop back. This is a loop back. These are also networks which are behind this host. Um, and they are also nicely advertised into ERGRP. Let's go back to the switch. So um, it's pretty much a router which switch capabilities and that's the beauty of it. Um, much more to tell about layer 3 switching because but this video is too short to dig into every single piece because we, uh, we're dealing with IP Ceph and technology um, and um, forward information base and adjacency tables. Now let me show you something else. Let's configure an access list. Access list uh, standard. Call it like no. Or you can use you cannot use numbers with Cisco and access list. So no tree network. And say permit. Uh, yeah, let's just permit 1.1.1.1. X. And now we're going to do this. We're going to go to the interface VN1. 1. And then IP access group. Not. No. Tree network. In. Okay. Um, I expect it to route the route to disappears because I'm gonna block here this host, <coughs> and I'm blocked, but it's still in the routing table. It sometimes happens with Cisco. Probably have to clear the routing table. Come, 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 come. It's definitely blocked. But, for some reason, these routes are still on their table. Uh, this takes forever, of course. Okay. Uh, clear IP routes. Show the route. Yeah, you see, this is better. This is the way I want it. Because these routes here can't go through anymore because we just applied an access list to the switch. Isn't it nice? It's just like a router. Um, yeah, it's way cool, folks. And... If I had, if it was up to me, I would, um, yeah, I would implement layer three switching in any company. But um, okay, I don't have to be and say on this, of course. Um, what else is to tell about layer three switching? Um, there's much more to tell, but this video is too short. I have 20 more seconds and I'm reaching 10 minutes. So I um, hope this uh, cleared up a little bit. And if you guys have any questions, call me at 310-742-4411. Okay, thanks for watching and have a great day.